This is Ryan with GameRoomSolutions.com and today I'm going to show you how to get a Raspberry Pi going with your arcade uh, all the way from finding an image, what is an image, getting that put on a micro SD card, putting it into your Pi and then also the ton of work that we put into our config file. So if, if you do get a two player 20 button setup from us, whether it's one of our bar top kits, our full size or our control panels or if it's just the buttons and joysticks and encoder and you're putting them in, in, in something that you built the config files are going to save you a ton of time and we're going to show you here how you can copy those over uh, so make sure and stick around alright so let's get started um, the first thing you need to do is if you go to mega.nz and what this is a lot of the images uh, that you can get for your Raspberry Pi they put on mega one of the catches is mega will only let you download five gigabytes without paying paying them for a month's service or whatever so if you scroll down through here it this will just make life easier if you select and just do the one month the pro life you can also uncheck it and say you know i don't want it to recharge the next month or whatever this should be plenty to get you uh, what you need because you can download up to a terabyte uh, so sign up for that um, you can also torrent if you're familiar with torrents you could do torrents as well but this mega is the easiest way so I'm going to show this um, if you're not familiar with torrents so if you also scroll down through here and you find the mega sync there's an older version called mega downloader that was like a third party it doesn't work very well uh, this mega sync works awesome essentially what it is you'll download it you'll run it you'll point it to a folder that you want make sure it's a big enough folder it can handle whatever size image you want to get but you point it to that folder and then as you go to download uh, from Mega, it'll automatically download in this um, in this application. And you can see it active transfer and when it completes and so forth. So it's like a direct download through that. So so if you pay them for the month, you'll get the um, you'll get plenty of download bandwidth from them. And then if you download this app, you can you can do that. Uh, you you can bring it down really easy as well. And again, you can tour and if you understand how to do that. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is go to arcadepunks.com. They have a ton of images out here, and essentially what an image is, it's, it's somebody already put together all the software necessary uh, that looks a certain way for your arcade, and then they, they made that essentially an image file. You can download that file and then copy it uh, to your micro SD, put it in, and it'll work exactly how they, how they intended for it to. So, so from here, this, this site's a little bit tricky because they got a lot of ads and stuff, but what you're going to do is go to front ends and pi image downloads then once you're there you can go to date added newest first that way it sorts to the newest things uh, that have been posted so you can see here there's quite a few if you click on the the read NFL typically it'll take you to a YouTube video and show you what it looks like uh, you can gauge it based on the size of your SD card so for instance this one's a 32 gigabyte arcade only uh, so it only have the, have the uh, main files on it. Uh, some of these are are really loaded and full. If you go through some of them, you only have the cho uh, the the choice to torrent. So you could download something like uTorrent uh, and then click that link. It'll open in uTorrent and download it. Or you can do the Mega like we talked about on some of these. And then they also have the Usernet as well if you're familiar with that. So come down through here again. Click the info. You can look at you can preview the image if you want. If you go to uh, Drew Talks. Or Mad Little Pixels channels on YouTube, they go through a lot of these in in depth. Uh, but what I would do is I'm going to go ahead and download this um, 200 gigabyte Supreme build. So if I click that, what it's going to do is open up some ads here. Don't let all this freak you out. Just wait. There's a counter up in the top right hand corner. If you simply wait until that says Skip Ad and click that one, it'll click you through to the Mega. Okay, so you can see the mega folder here, and uh, what you'll want to do is you can just click all of these. There'll be a download, or you can right-click and say download, and um, you'll have the choice to download it through their app. Just do that. You'll start to see the active transfers, and, and those will come all the way down. Okay, so once you download those files, there is a uh, they'll come down in a zip, so you'll just want to unzip those. You can use WinZip or, or the... Um, the, the built-in Windows extractor. Just extract that out and you'll get an image file. You'll want to download Win32 Disk Imager. You can click the folder, find the image, and then select which uh, where your um, 
micro SD card is, make sure this is correct because it's going to overwrite whatever it is. So, so don't accidentally um, so select some drive that you don't want to delete your data. So select that and you'll simply hit write. It's going to tell you it'll corrupt it, which you understand that. So you're starting fresh here. And that's going to copy the image down. Once that's complete, uh, you're done with the you're done with the um, download and the computer side of this, and we'll move over to the Pi. Okay, so when you first boot your image, you're going to get to the configure input, and it's going to ask us to do that. So we want to do that so we can get some basic controls. Uh, this is just going to be controls for emulation station, not for all of the emulators and the games and that kind of stuff. It'll just allow us to navigate the first screens, and. Uh, the, the goal of this is to be able to do basic navigation so we can find our IP address or connect it to our Wi-Fi and get our IP so we can copy those configs over uh, so everything will work for us. So what you're going to do here is just hold down a button. It'll recognize the controller. Then you just configure it as it says. So up, down, left, right, select, start, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. That's how I configure them. You can configure them however it makes sense to you. You're going to navigate with A and B mostly. Uh, once I get to the other ones, you can just hold down the button for a couple seconds. And it'll just skip it. And you'll want to do that until you get down uh, to the hot key. You'll go ahead and do that as your select. So enable hot key. I'll just hit select. Now I can navigate with my my A and my B here. So now if I, once I uh, back out, so now I have basic navigation. I want to go into the setup. Yours might look a little different in this depending on the image that you got, but it's all emulation station as the front end. This will also have a track mode, which I'll show in a little bit. So what you want to do here is find your Wi-Fi, how to connect it to your Wi-Fi. If you hardwired it in, you want to just go to show IP address. Uh, you'll need a keyboard, so just plug a USB keyboard in so you can find your Wi-Fi network uh, connected up. It'll tell you what the IP address is, but you can always go into show IP and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the IP address of what I need now, and we'll go back over to the computer. Okay, so now we're back at our computer, and we've done a couple things here. Um, we downloaded the config files uh, for all the Game Room Solutions 2-player 20-button setups. This also work on our large arcade with the 22-button um, setups. But essentially what's in here are the um, config files that will overwrite so things will work across RetroArch, uh, which a majority of the emulators use. Um, Daphne, so for like LaserDisc, Dragon Slayer style games, and then Nintendo 64. There's also a text file here. but um, So you'll have that file extracted. You'll see these files in there. And then also open up another um, browser or a uh, folder window here. And you can just do backslash backslash in that IP address and it'll come to your share folder here. You also could just type backslash backslash retro pie and it should take you here. Um, I have multiple ones on my network. That's why I went ahead and used the, um, the IP address there. So what I'm going to do, if you're not familiar with this, just real quick, here's your ROMs folder. So this is where you drop your ROMs. If you got an image that didn't have them, you could get ROMs and drop them in here. Just make sure that they're compatible with the pie. Um, the BIOS, same way. A lot of these will already come um, ready to go. Um, if you want to do some different splash screens or intro videos, you can put those in there. Uh, but what we want is the configs folder here. So when we go to the configs folder, what we're going to do is we're going to grab these three folders. We're going to copy those and then paste them over. And we want to make sure an overwrite. So you can see it comes up, replace the files. Okay, so now we've overwritten that, so, so our game should work going across the different systems and also emulation station. For a track mode, um, what we want to do is go into the all folder here, and then you'll see a folder called a track mode. This attract.config file here is where the controls for a track mode go. Now you can just boot into a track mode, and a track mode, just so you know, you have two different versions. You have emulation station when it first boots up. Um, but you also, on a lot of these images, can switch it to track mode. And if you've ever seen something like Hyperspin, there's just a lot fancier menus and fancier navigation in the attract mode. But they're all based on RetroPie, so don't let that confuse you. But in the attract, in, in attract mode itself, you can go into the controls section and you can configure them how you want. If you want to follow our diagram, we can't simply just copy over this. It would be easy. But if we did, this 
uh, this has different settings based on the image that you use. So we just want to copy the control section. Uh, so real quick, the easiest way to do this is download um, Notepad++. You can just Google it, or there's also a link in here. Download that, install it. It just works way better than regular Notepad. So you can see here there's a file readme for track mode controls. So I can open that in Notepad++. It'll be nicely organized here. It gives you some instructions uh, to navigate where we did over here to the track mode folder. Now it wants us to open the attract mode config. So I will edit that. And then what it wants us to do is find the input map. So this right here is the map that we use across for attract mode. And again, you can hit the diagram here. I'll have links for everything in the description. Uh, but essentially what we want to do is copy that. And then we want to go on our image. And there's a couple ways. I can hit control F and just find it or I can just search for it. So I, I did a quick search for input map. Here it is. All I'm gonna do is just um, highlight that, including the word input map if you grabbed it. Right there, and then control V or paste. And you can see now it just replaced that. So I'm good there. I'm just gonna hit save. It already saved it back to the Pi. And now we will um, reboot our Raspberry Pi, let it come up and, and um, see where we're at. Okay, so now that we've copied over the config files, all of our controls should work. I'm still in emulation station here. Uh, do a reboot of your Pi. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the Arcade Classics here uh, just to show you that it's gonna work. Um, this is the basic navigation and then I'm gonna show you, uh, doesn't really matter what game we pick here, but I wanna show a two player game, so we'll go down. Uh, a little bit um, so yeah well, I'll show you this that now we're an emulation station it still navigates like I initially did it um, when we go in I'll show you track mode in a second then all of that will be configured as well to the diagram so what we're gonna do is go to an easy game to see which I always go to Street Fighter 2 it's the easiest one to quickly test to make sure everything's working uh, like you expect uh, in a track mode, you'll be able to page up and page down all that. You can do that here, but I'll just go this way to kind of show you a list here. All right, so we'll go into um, uh, Street Fighter 2 World Warrior here. Okay, so once that boots up, we'll test through everything here. So, coin player one, coin player two, start player one, start player two, up, down, left, right. That all looks good. Select each player. And then uh, your punches and your kicks. Everything's, all the configs are done to Street Fighter, so that's the quickest way to test everything. So you can see here, um, everything looks good. So I'll back out by holding down the mode and the exit. And then once we do that, I wanna go back out and I wanna go back to settings. You'll find it in your settings. Let's see if I can find it here without skipping through it. Um, there it is, set up. And a lot of these images will have a track mode. So track mode, everything's built on top of what they call RetroPie. This is the emulation station. Again, this could look a little bit different. A track mode could look a little bit different. A track mode is just a little bit fancier. Uh, menus and all that, if you're familiar with Hyperspin, it's kind of a take on that, on the Raspberry Pi. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit switch to a track mode. And now it'll always boot into a track mode and I'll show you that. You can always go back into track mode settings and go back to emulation station if you want. So we'll go ahead and, and um, do that now. Okay, so we're booted in a track mode now. Again, this could look different based on the version, whether it's HyperPi, this is the Supreme build. So it, it's typically organized in arcades, consoles, portables. So we'll go into the arcades. This is my navigate now, it's no longer A and B. So uh, just look at our diagram, it'll tell you how everything's set up. So now I can go into the different arcade systems here. I'll just select the main arcade. And then you can see it's a lot fancier layout uh, than what Emulation Station had as you go through all of these games. So again, it's gonna work the same. Um, 
we'll go ahead and go back into uh, Street Fighter because it's, it's the exact same thing, it's the exact same boot. Um, it's just a different interface that you see and then the way that the controls work. So again, that's enter, exit. Uh, we have page up, page down. Again, you'll get the wiring diagram and anything. So you can put this in your own build. This is one of our control panels in our full-size cabinets, pedestals, bar tops, whatever it is, you can do this setup. Just copy the configs like we did and you'll get right to uh, right to play and you can take all of our hard work and, and kind of bypass having to figure out how to do the controls. So again, this is working as expected. Again, I can hold down mode and go to exit to exit out. And uh, I'll just do some page up here just to show you. Or I can go letter up if I want to. So I'll go to R, Q, P, O, back down, back out. Um, go down to consoles and so forth. So that's it. It's pretty easy to get everything set up uh, to the image that you want. Uh, so here's all the consoles here. And again, we've already done all the hard work to configure all the different emulators and RetroArch. Uh, but the one last thing I do want to show you, if you do want to change uh, change your controls, we'll just boot in uh, to Nintendo here. So if, if there is a certain game that you want to set up that's different than how the controls are, you can do that. So for instance, if you wanted to utilize this run button for Mortal Kombat and so forth, when you boot into a game, if it's uh, not set up the way that you want, you can actually go into RetroArch. And to do that, you'll hold down Select and hit this top middle button. And now I'm in RetroArch. So I can use a keyboard if I want to or the navigation. But what you'll want to do is go into the Controls section here. Uh, I'll probably just, I don't know if I have a keyboard to put in here. But you'll go into the Controls section. You'll see how the controls are laid out. You can change the buttons around. Wait, that might have done. Oh, that just went back. Let me go. Okay, here's my forward and back then. So I can go down here to controls, go in, and then I could come down and say, okay, it'll start right under here. Oh, I can say, okay, B button's a B button, but if I want to change it, I could just push over on the uh, over on the joystick and configure it to whatever I want. And this is important. You can go ahead and, and hit it for the save game remap file and that'll save the controls just for this game. But if you want to change it for the entire system, then you go to save core remap. But be careful with that, because again, if I do that, everything that's using this, this version of the uh, RetroArch will now convert to that. So uh, we should have that set up how it should be for each system. So you might just want to save the game remap file, and then you'll go back out. Um, again, this is the same thing right here, save game override, save core override, so make sure and pick it how you want. I don't care about any of that for this, so I'll just go back to uh, my quick menu and hit resume, and I'm right back into the game. So if you do want to change the controls up for a specific game, that's how easy it is. You'll hit the mode in this top center button uh, to get into those settings. Past that, everything should work out of the box, ready to go. Make sure and visit GameRoomSolutions.com and like the video. Thanks. Yeah.